Today I'm going to talk about life in the civil services in the IAS. And if you want to be an IAS officer, what it takes to be there. If this story is leaked, they will go back and away. What am I trying to tell you today? I'm trying to tell you that the civil services requires all round skills. Understanding what to say in which situation. Thank you. Hello there. When I was SDM Kalka years ago, a man walked into my office. This man was poor, tattered clothes. He walked up and he said, this is my work. This is my application. I read it. I had a look at it. I found that it wasn't a big, difficult job. But he looked at me with some trepidation, some kind of uncertainty in his eyes. So I asked him, what's the matter? He says, I'm giving you this application, which I've given to many officers before you, and the work has not been done. I don't have much hope, but here I am presenting it to you anyway. So I looked at him. I was confident. I was young. I was dynamic. I thought I'll do it. I said, don't worry. Come back next week. It should be done. So I marked it to someone, sent it to someone. That person took more than a week, took a month. This guy came a couple of times. He started taunting me a little because he was not getting his work done. So I called the person who had to do it, made him promise that within two days, he will come back with the work done. Yet it was not done. So this person kept coming to my office and the work was still not done. And he kept taunting me in a way, even though I was on a powerful seat, he would say, see, I told you it wouldn't be done. So one day I sat with that junior officer and actually got the thing done myself. Took me a couple of hours out of my time. And when it was done, this gentleman came again to my office. When he came, the look on his eyes, the expression on his face, that is the lesson I've learned in life, that when you do someone something for someone like that, they pay you so many times gratitude, so many blessings, so many good wishes. And that is what matters in life. I'm Vivek Atre. I'm a former IAS officer. I'm a motivational speaker and author now. And I've been speaking at various fora. Today, I'm going to talk about life in the civil services in the IAS. I was in the, I was in the civil services for 26 years, in the HCS for 19, and in the IAS for seven after that. And I resigned last year because I wanted to do more creative things, writing, speaking, inspiring people, whoever would listen to me. But I can tell you about life in the IAS. And if you want to be an IAS officer, what it takes to be there. The first thing is that Many things happen which require you to be an all-rounder. Those who are unidimensional, they've studied very hard, they've come into the civil services, they don't know how to talk to people, understand life. There are so many things happening in India which are different from your background. You will have people walking in who are from a different background all the time. They have different requirements. So one minute you might have someone like that gentleman I mentioned who has some work related to a road or a nali or a tap or some electricity meter, or some property which is really dear to him. The other minute you might have a very fancy uh, posse of three or four people walking in who say that we want to organize a Greek food festival in your area. So you have to be an all-rounder. If you are an all-rounder, then you can understand and appreciate various kinds of people. Then you can be a successful civil servant. See, once what happened, you have to think on your feet. I was SDM Kalka again, and I was on duty at something called the Pinjor Gardens, very famous gardens near Kalka. In these gardens, we were to have a mango festival. And the administration is always involved in these kinds of things, protocol, events, administration. So the mango festival was a big thing. And we were expecting the agriculture minister of the state to come as the chief guest. And when we were waiting for the chief guest, the DC, my boss, asked me, he says, do you think he'll be on time? Why don't you give a call? These were not the days of mobiles. So I called up on his landline. And the minister was said to be sleeping. We are waiting there with bouquets. And the minister is sleeping in about 30 kilometers away. So I told the chap there, I said, do you think he'll wake up and come for our event? He said, I don't think so. So that was good advice. We went back. And I went and told the DC he's not coming. Suddenly, a very important person of the state, the governor, he decided to stop by at Pinjor Garden on his way back from Shimla to Chandigarh. We get a message that the governor is coming. We are standing there with bouquets for the person who didn't come. Suddenly the governor comes with his cavalcade. 
he happened to know me because he kept passing by off and on he says you are standing with flowers how did you know i am coming i said sir 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 i just gave him the flowers so he looks at me he says thank you what is happening here i said sir this is a mango mela he says what is to be done no the governor is much senior in hierarchy than any minister but the governor wanted to do something there so i said sir the ribbon so he went and cut the ribbon and that presence of mind meant we had a chief guest who was much superior to the chief guest who was originally to come who was actually sleeping and this governor went and inaugurated the mango fest even though he wasn't scheduled to do so now those were the days when the media wasn't very strong and they weren't very very alert so i would nothing came in the papers about this that you know protocol breach this that but it could have happened but it was something that presence of mind helped in getting a chief guest which we otherwise wouldn't have had so these things happen but nowadays things have changed a little more what happens to an administrator in the field is i've been dc of panchkula before i resigned what happens is the media is in your face all the time there are so many politicians in your face they all have pressing demands they want things to happen now and the media is watching you so if you make any attempt at losing your temper or saying something wrong to someone or if you slip up anywhere as, a, as an administrator they are going to come and ask you for your reaction your quote why did you do this why did you do that so i had once a television crew coming to my room and a young boy about 14 years who said that i want to spend one day with you of course the cal- the television channel wanted him to do that so he said one day with the dc panchkula so that the, he could decide this boy of 14 whether he wanted to be a dc or not an is officer or not so he spent the whole day and at the end of the day this guy and the tv crew was tired i was not because i have to be an all rounder when i am an administrator i cannot be lacking in energy so being that all rounder is something that helped me in my service and even though things were getting frenzied things were getting very hectic things were getting very very pressing at times you had so much pressure and stress i was able to handle it only by keeping cool and by being diverse in my interests so i started writing while being an officer i started writing creatively sending some articles to the newspaper that was an outlet for me so i used to share with my younger colleagues i said if you have an outlet on a sunday apart from your work if you have something creative to do that will help you in your career because when you're working 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 you don't have time for your family you don't have time for yourself your monday mornings are so bad and then the chief minister is scolding you somebody is calling you up all the time something is going wrong all the time so ias officers and civil service civil servants who are senior people they also have to be creative at times they have to take out time to go for a walk maybe sing a few songs maybe listen to music maybe watch some sports indulge in sports themselves these are the things they need to do now these things they can happen only if you think a little out of the box if you are unidimensional again it doesn't happen so find that creative interest that is something that helped me that was something that really really was good for me now i was director of it later this is a story i like to tell often because it's a story which was linked to the growth of it in chandigarh there was something funny that happened we wanted infosys a company to come and invest there and when infosys would have invested then we ne- realized that if that it park which we were making was to come up then one or two big companies like infosys was to come now when we set up the it park we had no idea who will come first we kept pressing them inviting companies on behalf of the government and as director it i was the one trying to push chandigarh for investment by them when infosys finally decided to come it was a big red letter day for us but they told us no media coverage i mean they said no media coverage it was very difficult for us to keep that media coverage from happening because they said that unless this stays under wraps for another 15 days our board won't approve it and this and that and it shouldn't be leaked to the media so handling the media is something which a civil services officer really needs to handle really needs to be on the ball somehow i was able to speak to the editor of the paper which had got the story and convince him request him cajole him somehow that sir please do not publish this in the interest of the region if this story is leaked they will go back and away all those 20000 jobs which are to come to this region they won't come luckily he listened to me the story didn't come they came and they invested and the it park came up so these are things which you find fulfilling later but something funny also happens at times in in your service 
like i said the governor came and he inaugurated something there was another governor and this governor was a little tiny in stature in height so he needed a footstool wherever he went and whenever he went he would speak on the mic but he needed a footstool so the instructions were to me and i was posted in a place called narayangarh at that time that the governor saab is coming please have a footstool for him which we duly arranged he had the footstool he spoke on the mic and it was all fine well what happened after that was after his speech the footstool was no way to be found when he wanted to come back on stage to make an announcement somebody had removed it thinking it's not needed now but the governor saab said no no i want to announce something for the children and we couldn't find the footstool i said some sorry i can't find the footstool would you like to speak without the podium so that he could be seen without the podium and he agreed gentlemanly but we couldn't find the footstool still anyway he made his announcement and i learned my lesson keep footstools with you there's another story about government and a footstool there's a young person who joins an office and he is very short very tiny when he sits on the chair his feet don't touch the ground four foot something short person so he needs a footstool by the time he writes his application for a footstool and by the time the replies come and the file keeps getting thicker he still doesn't get his footstool and only when the file gets this thick then he realizes he doesn't need a footstool anymore because the file is good enough so he puts that as a footstool what am i trying to tell you today i'm trying to tell you that the civil services requires all round skills it requires a sense of humor it requires creativity it requires an ability to think differently to understand people who are different from you to have empathy for others to have cheerfulness whenever you can find it to have emotional intelligence not only bookish intelligence these are the things that really matter when you go on to become a civil servant you may be in any field actually when you are in any field you're a whiz kid at it or you're a whiz kid at something else you still have to have people skills larger skills all round skills understanding what to say in which situation so these are the things which i talk about these days and these are the things i want to tell my audience today and these are the things which really help in life what helps is not what certificate you got what accolades you got what prizes you got what promotion you got what increment you got what money you got but the smile on the face of that person who actually you did some work for and he said bless you that's what matters thank you very much tell us what you think about this video and don't forget to like share and subscribe